Well, welcome back everybody, I'm George, and today's video is going to be on methanol. I get so many calls about it, and the comments I continue to answer down below are so simple. No, the comments aren't simple. It's so simple for you to leave a comment. Um, and for those of you who have, you know that I answer them uh, when I get to them, which is almost immediately. Well, you can also call me. I have no qualms with that. There's hundreds of people that will tell you that, or send me an email and uh, we can communicate. I communicate freely and openly with the community. So we're so glad to have you here. You know, one of the, the major questions, one of the major questions, there are multiples I get, is always about methanol and the fear, the absolute fear of methanol and I'm going to go blind. We're going to, we, we, we need to make sure that everybody is armed with the information necessary in order to be safe. But I also want you to be knowledgeable so that when you have these discussions that you can intellectually transmit the information so that people understand what is possible, what is impossible, and what is normal. Because our, there is a normal amount of methanol in our daily lives. So let's get right to it. Now, I know everybody wants to get to the meat of the stuff, but let's do this quick test and I'm gonna show you something. Watch, it's about testing for methanol. Watch this. Okay, let's start with methanol. So the burn test. You see how yellow it burns? And that's it's almost like the entire flame. So that's the toxic methanol and that's the reaction when you light it. Now let's burn some methanol. You see that? It's, it's, it's a transparent flame. I can see the flame, and you should be able to see it too. Just barely, it's a transparent flame. Now, you may get a little bit of yellow on the outside, on the tip, and that's because the flame is interfering. Oh yeah, it's interfering with the, with the atmosphere. So it, it, it's pulling oxygen and everything else out of it. You see it, yeah, a little bit of yellow flame. That is ethanol. Again, very flammable, but not so toxic. So that is a surefire method for testing for ethanol. It, it is the most direct and the most available to us in the free world, um, and, and it works. Now, you'll notice on there, see, I collected, when I did, this, this is the bottle that I have of my four shots in heads from a 15 gallon run. And that's not product, that was mash, 15 gallons. So that's how much of the four shots and heads that I received, that I collected. Now that was separated mathematically and when I get to my intro about my new project, uh, I'll show you how that actually works, how that actually happened because it is mathematically and scientifically separated for me. And then, so this is an, an example of, of 100 milliliters of methanol that I extracted, 100 milliliters. So for those who have that, that, that real fear of, of methanol, understand there is very little. And in some cases, example, in a sugar wash, there is even less than that or none. Totally dependent, but it's always good to check. That's why we always say, throw out the first couple of ounces. Well, what have you got to lose? A couple. That's two ounces. Throw out the first two ounces and everybody's happy, okay? Uh, and, and if you're trying to save two ounces, you need to find another hobby. So regardless of what it is you make, throw out the first two ounces and you should be safe, but still check it. Now, all this information comes from uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, the NIH, National Institute for Health, um, it also comes from the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, uh, and a lot of other sources. And I check, even Wikipedia, and I check Wikipedia when I find something on there, I find a couple of other sources to validate that. So use that same principle and validate what I tell you. Check what I say, don't just believe me. All right, now what kind of host would I be if I didn't give you an update on Mike? As he describes himself, just an ordinary blind guy. Watch this. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name's Mike, and uh, that's about all I'm gonna tell you. Anyway, uh, I'm here today making a, uh, what I'm gonna call a dirty vodka uh, 
No, I'm making uh, uh, stuffed green olive flavored water. All right, and that's what we got coming out of the uh, parrot right now into the jar. And uh, uh, we're in reflux mode. Uh, you probably saw the sight glasses and they're doing their thing and all that. And uh, um, I'm not really paying too much attention today uh, uh, to my uh, uh, talking temperature and stuff and working the app on my phone to go through the Solis uh, smart probes and into the unit over there because the person who's running that camera is sighted. So that's pretty handy. Man. I, I can be lazy. Mike, simply amazing. And we are making progress on that audio PID. So bear with us and everybody else out there, bear with us. We're just about that close. So let's get back to what we're talking about, methanol. All right, methanol. How much methanol does it take in order for us to feel the adverse effects uh, physically or mentally? Because methanol can make you mentally delusional, just like ethanol. Well, the fact of the matter is, let's talk about pure methanol. Pure methanol that's not been cut, it's not been, it has nothing else in it, uh, maybe some acetone, and all those things that come off at the very beginning, okay? Your four shots. Your method, now, I use these syringes for another hobby that I have, uh, but I thought it'd be great to show you as an example. Here's an empty cup, uh, and these cups are 600 milliliters or 20 ounces. Now, this is, what this is, is 10 milliliters of pure methanol. Now, I got water in here, okay? But it's pure methanol for our purposes. It takes 10 milliliters of pure ethanol consumed by an individual. So if you consume that much methanol, pure, that will metabolize in your body to what they call formic acid, which that's 0.34 ounces. It's a third of an ounce and it metabolizes into formic acid which affects the optic nerve and we know that, that it takes that much pure methanol to make you go blind. So are we clear? We're clear. Now knowing that, <coughs> we know that uh, the median lethal dose, that's the median uh, because it's a sliding scale, okay? It's a sliding scale so it, yeah, it's not average, but you understand how to get to median. Uh, because the, the National Institute of Health says it takes two to eight ounces, and that's 59 to 236 milliliters, uh, in order to cause death. Uh, or it can be fatal, anywhere in that, in that average. Well, the median of that is 100 milliliters, which would be five of these. This is a 20 milliliter syringe. So it would take five of these, to achieve the median level of methanol toxicity in order to be fatal. Hmm, what's that mean? That is, anywhere from two ounces, which is 59 milliliters, and you'll see that there, anywhere from that to a full eight ounces, which is 236 milliliters, anywhere in between this, and we already know that the median is 100, 59, 236. So in the middle, the median dose for a fatal injection or for a fatal consumption is 100. That's what it takes in order to cause death. We should be making some sense now. We, there, now you should have some questions and your questions may revolve around, well, how much do I actually produce? Well. 15 gallons of mash produced 100 milliliters. And you know, 100 milliliters is 3.4 ounces. So that goes to show you that it, there's not much there, but it does need to be removed. And it's the first thing that comes off. And remember that methanol, with all of the other things, the acetone, uh, the bin, um, it goes, but there's, there's about six different chemicals. And some of them are derivatives of two or more of the first couple that come off. So the derivatives, so it's, so that's why the list gets so long, but there's, three, there's a couple of basic ones. Uh, and the most basic is the methanol. And that comes off at a 145 degrees Fahrenheit. 
which is 60, see I got some notes around here, 62.77 degrees Celsius. And that's when that happens, it, because that's why <clears throat> before you get to ethanol, which is one, somewhere around 173, okay, it depends on which textbook you look at. But we know for a fact that the vaporization point for ethanol is this high, 173. Well, it, you've got to go through these to get there. Hmm. Oh, by the way, that's 78.3 degrees Celsius. So we know that you've got to go past these to get here. So it's going to happen by itself. Please do not fret. Do not worry and do not get your head so wrapped around this that it scares you. It should not scare you because you're in control. So when you do start your draw, the very first thing that comes out immediately is methanol. So you'll know when to get it. You get it right away. And then after that will become your heads and then you go right into hearts. Uh, in a small still, and we're using you know anywhere like 20 liter still, somewhere around five gallons, uh, your heads will be so minute that if you throw out the four shots, you've probably thrown out the heads with it. And what I mean by that is that, like as an example, if I'm running a small five gallon still at home, uh, I'll throw out, oh, probably four ounces. Um, and in that four ounces will be probably maybe an ounce or so, maybe an ounce and a half of methanol, the rest of its heads. So I'll do my, my, my first cut right there at about four ounces, toss it, believe me, everything else is hearts until you get to the tails. So. I have known and heard of people that will throw out the first couple jars. Uh, totally up to you. Uh, there's no need to. You've, you're throwing out good product. Okay. Oh, we got that much. Now, what is the acceptable level? Because here's what we also know. We know that uh, fruit juices have methanol in them. Naturally, they're, it's, it's a natural product. Uh, beer has methanol in it. Wine has methanol in it, and so do distilled spirits, but we separate them. So what is the acceptable level of methanol according to the National Institutes of Health and the Environmental Protection Agency? Well, for a 175-pound male, or you know, a guy who's like 79.3 kilograms, uh, and I use that as, that's just a data point for you so you can understand. For a person that size, um, per day, it's about two, two milligrams. And we're going to try to show you what two milligrams looks like. You ready? And this is a small syringe. There. That's two milligrams, which is like two drops. That's the acceptable level, if found in your bloodstream, that your body can metabolize and work through and, get the, and you won't have any ill effects. Uh, because we know that it's resident in a lot of stuff. Now, if you drank a bottle of apple juice, and you drink a whole bottle of apple juice, I'm talking about a half a gallon of apple juice, you're going to have one serious headache because you have ingested more methanol in that half a gallon of apple juice than you could ever hope to produce in a still or in a five gallon still. So you, you, you get my point? It's let's not get so fearful that we avoid the art and the skill and the science that perfect marriage that makes distillers so unique okay one last thought keep this in mind when we make wine or when we make beer or when we make the distillate you know that all three of those processes are different but the one thing that's the same in every one of them is the very first step. So if you're going to make a wine, you'll make what they call a must. And that's just the fermented fruits, water, sugar with yeast, and it ferments. Well, for winemakers, we call that a must. 
and uh, the stuff on the bottom we call lees. There you go. When you're making a beer, we call it a wort. And the stuff on the bottom, you know, that settles out, we call that trub. Okay, we've got our own language in all three different hobby fields. But we've fermented. Now, when we make our distillate, okay, we'll add our corn, sugar, wheat, malt, barley, whatever you're making. With sugar and yeast, and we let it ferment. All three of those are exactly the same. They are nothing more than fermented sugars, which leave us with alcohol and methanol. Now, next step, wine. We stabilize, we clarify, we bottle. With beer, we clarify, we bottle. With distillate, we put it in a still and separate the methanol off of it and then drink the rest of it because it just tastes good. But we've never taken the methanol from the wine or the beer. It begs the question, why? Well, the concentration of methanol in a liter of wine is so minute that it doesn't have any ill effects on the human body unless you drink three or four bottles and then you get that burning headache you know that that morning hangover uh, and it's the same thing with beer there's not enough concentration of methanol in that beer to have to cause any ill effects on you unless you over drink it so moderation is the key to success if you over drink and you some of you will understand this if you over drink beer you have one hell of a headache the next day well that's why Last but not least, with your distillate, if you do everything right, what you'll find is, is that the next day, everybody says this, my shine is so good, you'll never have a headache the next day. That's right, because you know what? You've separated the methanol. So please, stay with us. Part two of this video is coming up, and uh, if you want to know how this all started and where the fear mongering came from, I'm going to enlighten you on that, but in the meantime, Please comment below, get in touch with us. We love your participation. We're here for you. So, happy to still.